Welcome to our TV show featuring documentaries revealing the realities behind myths and fallacies using research and scholarship. I'm your host, Ergün Kırlıkovalı, and I will be with you every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're welcome to send me your feedback at hashtag ethocide. Repeat, hashtag ethocide. Today, let's take a calm and scholarly look at the 24th of April, a date Armenians claim a genocide has started in 1915. The New York Times agrees in its April 17th, 2015 op-ed, Turkey's willful amnesia, saying, and I quote, next Friday, April 24th, Armenians the world over will commemorate the 100th anniversary of the start of the mass killings of Armenians in Ottoman Turkey, now widely recognized as the first genocide of the 20th century. Many major newspapers and broadcasting companies hold this line of thinking. And Wikipedia, known to take Armenian claims at face value and single-mindedly censoring responsibly opposing views, says this, I quote, on April 24th, 1915, the Armenian genocide began. That day, the Turkish government arrested and executed several hundred Armenian intellectuals. After that, ordinary Armenians were turned out of their homes and sent on death marches through the Mesopotamian desert without food or water." Unquote. Armenian media pulls no punches. Here's what Michael Mensoyan says in his essay titled The Changing Significance of April 24th, published in Armenian Weekly on May 8th, 2017. I quote, on April 24th of 1915, some 27, 275 Armenian intellectuals, residents of Istanbul, were detained by the authorities ostensibly for routine questioning, only to be spirited away to be murdered." Unquote. Chris Atamian, a contributor at HuffPost, embellishes even more in his article named April 24th, Remembering the Armenian Dead, published on 24th of April, 2012. I quote, on April 24, 1915, Turkish authorities in the Ottoman Empire rounded up close to 100 leading Armenians in Istanbul and deported them to Ayash and Çankırı. Many were killed along the way in the most gruesome manner, beaten, stoned, tortured. Komitas Vartabed went mad after barely escaping with his life, unquote. Well, was it really like that? Let's see if what they feed the unsuspecting public is true. I will now quote an Armenian who was in that group of Armenian intellectuals arrested, witnessed firsthand what transpired on that day, April 24, 1915, and how it ended months later. This letter was published in an Armenian newspaper in 1959, that is 62 years ago. I quote, Saturday, October 17, 1959, the Armenian Mirror Spectator letters to the editor, shock, the shock of Komitas. Dear sir, the article of Mrs. Marka Armenagian in memory of Komitas Vartabed, September 26, was indeed a most beautiful one in your issue of this day. However, as one who had been with the Vartabed from Istanbul to Chankuri all along, from the time we were arrested on April 24, 1915, I wish to make a slight correction. The paragraph, Komitas Vartabed was among the unfortunates who were arrested and deported, but not before he had witnessed the murder of his illustrious companions and the suffering of the Armenians who were on their way to death. The shock proved too much for his sensitive soul. Does not seem to conform to the facts. The Vartabed had a severe shock on, on board the ferry boat from Saraiburnu to Haidarpasha, where we took train for Ankara. It is true, but it was due 
to the loud remark or exclamation of the noted physician, Dr. Torkomian, who was more excited than the rest of us, and who exclaimed, they are going to dump us overboard in the Marmara Sea. Komitas Vartabet sat silent, his lower jaw hanging, and the assurances of Kechian, Kelekian, and myself, who were all sitting in the cabin in a group without effect. From Ankara to Chankara, Komitas Vartabet and Balakian Vartabet were transported in an open carriage with two horses with proper springs, while the rest of us, the 200, 200 or so, were given only springless dirt carts. Arriving in Chankara, it was Komitas Vartabed who started the notable Vesper serv service. At the halfway station to Chankara, it is true that Vartabed had some sort of nervous strain. But arrived at Chankara, when we were freed from our barracks jail, he celebrated high mass at the poor dirt floor church. He was always sane. There never was any massacres of Armenians in Chankara while we were there for several months. He was returned to Ankara by the same kind of carriage and thence to Istanbul by train. I was in the same group. All these details are among my memoirs published in English in the Mirror Spectator and other Armenian papers. Signed, Matthew A. Calendar, Baldwin, New York. The Armenian Mirror Spectator, Saturday, October 17, 1959. So, here it is. Directly from the mouth of one who was actually there. And this letter was published in an Armenian newspaper. So the ethno-religious bias cultivators in the big media have no excuse to dismiss this as a Turkish lie. Summary, no beating, no stoning, no torture, no killings. And yet, respectable newspapers like the New York Times and Huffington Post, social media like v w Wikipedia, all TV stations, public and private, are serving a perfect lie against a fictitious backdrop, year after year, ossifying an anti-Turkish and anti-Islam prejudice in the minds of unsuspecting public. And for the Armenians, it is a shame that they would deliberately misrepresent and embellish even a day like April 24th, 1915, which must hold a special place in their hearts and minds. April 24 marks the alleged beginning of the so-called Armenian Genocide. What is referred to as genocide is Tereset, the temporary settlement policy of the Ottoman government, a wartime military measure that was implemented more than a month later in order to mitigate the threat posed by numerous Armenian rebellions and fifth column activities. The only relocation that was being considered on April 24th was, ironically, one for the Turks, given that the Armenians were gaining the upper hand with their traitorous rebellion in Van. Telegram dated April 24th from the governor of Van, Cevdet Bey, to the Ministry of Interior reads as follows, I quote, until now, approximately 4,000 insurgent Armenians have been brought to the region from the vicinity. The rebels are engaged in highway robbery, attack the neighboring villages, and burn them. It is impossible to prevent this. Now many women and children are left homeless. It is not possible nor suitable to relocate them in tribal villages in the vicinity. Would it be convenient to begin sending them to the Western provinces?" Unquote. Imagine Turks being relocated on Turkish soil because of Armenian insurgency and terrorism. And further, imagine this fact about Turkish suffering being overturned against Turks by Armenians who reflect it as Armenian suffering. 
April 24th is designated as the date the alleged genocide began. Even though no known massacres were committed on that date, as we have seen a minute ago from the letter published in an Armenian newspaper by an Armenian leader who was in the group arrested. Armenian propaganda, unfortunately, bought lock, stock, and barrel by the big media in this country, would have us believe that these Armenian leaders were not only arrested, but massacred on the same day. What Armenian propaganda selectively leaves out is that there was a full-scale Armenian rebellion going on through various cities of the Ottoman Empire. And those arrested Armenian leaders were the planners and the implementers. The number of Istanbul Armenians who were arrested has been given as 235 in Cameron Gurin's book, The Armenian File. The 235 were sent to Ayash and Chankara prisons. The number of arrested increased in later times, but they were imprisoned elsewhere. These prisons were not large enough to accommodate a great number of prisoners. The breakdown, 100 were sent to Chankara, and the remainder, about 135, were sent to Ayash prison, located in a small town near Ankara. All of this information is from the white paper by Yusuf Saranay, the director of the Ottoman archives. He holds a PhD degree in history. Those arrested on April 24th and sent to Ayash were described as leaders of the Armenian committees and those who, whose residence in Istanbul poses danger to the public's security, unquote. On May 8th, 1915, Eight Armenian insurgents were released on the order of the Minister of Interior after only spending two weeks in Chankara prison. Their names, Vahram Torkumyan, Agop Nargilejian, Karabet Keropoyan, Zare Bardzabyan, Pozan Kechian, Parvan Tolayan, Rafael Karagözyan, and Vartabet Komitas. Others were also released later on. According to a document dated August 31st, 1915, the number of Armenians released between 24th and 24th April and 31st August had reached 35. 25 Armenians were found guilty and imprisoned in Ayash and Chankru after their trial, and 57 persons were sent to Derzor, Syria. Among the arrested were seven Armenians with foreign citizenship and these two were sent away to presumably Darzor. The implied idea is that Darzor was not a prison, but a faraway place where these leaders could not stir trouble. That was the implied idea. Most of these prisoners were on house arrest, which meant they could roam around during the day, but had to check in to the police station for signatures before they went to their designated house for the night. As you can see, no concentration camp atmosphere at all, as the deceptive and dishonest Armenian lobby loves to claim. Most, if not all, went free and returned home, except two. Indeed, two were killed, but not by police, as claimed. Rather, by some merchants who felt they were swindled by the two Armenians. In summary, these Armenians went through due process of law, and almost all of them were released. Once again, Armenian propaganda reveals its ugly face. They would have us believe all 235 were not only killed, but killed the same day they were arrested, after they were beaten, tortured, no less. The big media, unfortunately, is replete with such falsehood designed to vilify Turks. In summary, 235 Armenian community leaders were arrested in Istanbul on April 24, 1915, and sent to Chankara and Ayash. Among them, the editors and staff of Azadamart, 
the leading Armenian newspaper of Istanbul, the Armenian Patriarch of Istanbul and Zohrab, Armenian deputy in the Ottoman parliament, petitioned the Grand Vizier, Said Halim, the Minister of Interior, Talat, and the President of the Senate, Rifat, on behalf of the arrested Armenians of Istanbul. Though approached separately, all three gave, give identi identical answers that the government is isolating the Armenian leadership and dissolving the Armenian political organizations. The Turkey General Staff documents, Atase, from the Ottoman archives do not support the claim of an Armenian administration hellbent on exterminating Armenians as shamelessly and persistently claimed. This is why urging dialogue and civilized discussion between Turks and Armenians cannot, should not be labeled as denial. Let the primary sources and facts speak for themselves. The plain truth is there for all honest truth seekers. When falsehoods gradually infested the fine institutions of higher education of this country, I felt it my duty to expose those lies. Here's what I wrote in a letter to the editor addressed to the University of Southern California, Shaw Foundation, on January 8, 2014. The facts pertain to the subject of deliberate misrepresentations discussed so far, so please allow me to read it for you. The title of my letter was, The Clock Does Not Start in 1915. I was delighted to read the article, Israel Won't Recognize Armenian Genocide, says Ambassador. Haaretz, January 8, 2015. I congratulate Israel for being principled about history and not giving into Armenian propaganda and intimidation. I wish I could say the same thing for the USC Shoah Foundation, though. I'm referring to your articles of December 30, 2014, titled USC Shaw Foundation to Add Armenian Survivor Testimonies to Mark 100th Anniversary of the Genocide. And on January 8, 2015, titled No Longer Forgotten Genocide. Israel's position on the Turkish-Armenian conflict was eloquently stated by the former Israeli foreign minister and president Shimon Peres, who said, I quote, we reject attempts to create a similarity between the Holocaust and the Armenian allegations. Nothing similar to the Holocaust occurred. It's a tragedy what the Armenians went through, but not a genocide." Unquote. The Jewish Times was equally eloquent on June 21, 1990. I quote, an appropriate analogy with the Jewish Holocaust would be the systematic extermination of all the Muslim population in the Republic of Independent Armenia, which represented at least 30 to 40 percent of the total population of this republic." Unquote. But I think the world-renowned historian, Professor Bernard Lewis of Princeton University, said it best on the American TV C-SPAN 2, March 25, 2002, unquote. Saying that the massacre of the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire was the same as what happened to the Jews in Nazi Germany is a downright falsehood. What happened to the Armenians was the result of a massive Armenian armed rebellion against the Turks which began even before the war break, broke out and continued on a larger scale. Great numbers of Armenians, including members of the armed forces, deserted, crossed the frontier, and joined the Russian forces invading Turkey. Armenian rebels actually seized the city of Van and held it for a while, intending to hand it over to the invaders. There was guerrilla warfare all over Anatolia. 
There is clear evidence of a decision by the Turkish government to deport the Armenian population from the sensitive areas, which meant naturally the whole of Anatolia, not including the Arab provinces, which were then still part of the Ottoman Empire. There is no evidence of a decision to massacre. On the contrary, there is considerable evidence of attempt to prevent it." Unquote. Armenians love to start the clock on April 25th, 1915, but they conveniently forget to tell you they had killed 120,000 Muslims, mostly Turks, by the end of 1914 alone. See Pope Stephen, uh, Will Elizabeth and Anne, the Macmillan Dictionary of the First World War, London, 1995 page 35, and another 80,000 during Van Rebellion, see McCarthy, Arslan, Tashkran, and Turan, the Armenian Rebellion at Van, Salt Lake City, Utah, University of Utah, 2006. These horrific numbers come to 1.33% of the total Ottoman population when the first year of World War I was not even completed yet. Imagine this, 1.33% percent of Americans today would be 4.4 million Americans. What would America do if, if Armenians or any other people killed 4.4 million Americans today? Would America stop at Tereset or temporary resettlement like the Ottoman Empire did? Or would another Nagasaki and Hiroshima be on the table? Armenians today are screaming, crying, lying, and pounding your kitchen table with their shoes every single day, playing the sole victim. But the facts tell us a different story, a story of persistent propaganda, violent agitation, systematic terrorism, bloody revolts, supreme treason, territorial demands, raids, assassinations, bombings, murders, and more. Armenians took up arms against their own government and killed their Muslim neighbors and fellow Ottoman citizens, mostly Turks. What's even worse, they heinously handed over the city of Van that they had cleansed of Muslims to the invading Russian armies and then joined them in search of more Turks to kill. Turks only defended their home the homeland security measure the Turks took to mitigate the serious wartime military threat was temporary resettlement, or Tereset for short, of the Armenian insurgents and their supporters. International law says no genocide. The landmark decision of the highest court in Europe, the European Court of Human Rights, or ECHR for short, dated November, October 15, 2015, made it clear that Armenian genocide was an opinion, not a court verdict. It can be rejected, and such a rejection would be an exercise of free speech, and an inalienable human right. Thus, it was determined by the highest court in Europe that rejecting, refuting, and disproving the alleged Armenian genocide was not hate speech, as the deceptive Armenian lobby likes to claim, but it was mere free speech. Furthermore, the court reiterated that the alleged Armenian genocide could not be compared to the court-proven Jewish Holocaust, as the latter had gone through legal scrutiny at a component tribunal and the intent was documented. I hope USC Shaw Foundation reconsiders including the controversial Armenian narrative into the otherwise spotless program shining light on truth, not Armenian propaganda. Recently, the Armenian falsifiers included Greek genocide and Assyrian genocide into their baseless genocide claims. I guess if one has a hammer, Everything looks like a nail. What we need is more honest research, 
reasoned debate, discerning articulation, and civilized dialogue, not distortion, deception, falsification, and defamation. What we need is true scholarship as it was meant to be. Where do we go from here in the Turkish-Armenian relations? And what are the future trends? Well, those are great topics for future discussions. Thank you for joining me. See you next week.